everyone. Welcome back to yet another interview as part of our Independent Thinking Online Book Festival in partnership with uh, Sue Atkins Book Club. Amazing group of authors writing books, um, primarily for parents, but it, 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 that's, that, that does a disservice because there is so much here for anybody working with young children or older children. Um, and this book, I've, I've covered all sorts of books over the last little while, um, but this book I just, I had to stop reading otherwise I wouldn't get the chance to read all the other books that are coming through. At Independent Thinking, we're passionate about helping children find their voices, about social justice, about an education system that gets young people able to say, I don't like the way the world is and I want to do something about it. We talk about resilience. Mm. So yeah, we need to help children be resilient, but not, not just to put up with stuff, to actually go out and change things. Um, that's fundamentally, I, I talk about education, you know, the job of education is to make the world better. That's, that's what it's about. Not, you cannot keep it the same. There are a lot of people who want to keep it the same. You have to put a lot of effort in to maintain the status quo. It takes a lot of, uh, you have to change a lot of things to make sure nothing ever changes. But suddenly I came across this book and from around the world, we have little stories of children and young people who are saying, I don't like that. I want to do something about it. I'm not happy with how things are. I'm going to change things. It's so inspiring. And I put out a tweet yesterday on the at ITL Worldwide uh, Twitter account saying every school, if you if you are serious about having children find a voice and make changes in the world, you should have at least three copies of this. So I am very, as you can tell, very excited. Uh, the book is called You Can Change the World. Uh, everyday teen heroes making a difference everywhere and I'm delighted to welcome uh, Margaret Rook the author all the way from Ireland she looks like she's in a in a, in a cell somewhere but uh, it, 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 it's fine it's okay she should be released soon Margaret welcome thank you for writing this book tell us a little bit about yourself some of your other books how you came to be writing this book how, how you write a book such as that yeah, so uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, just delighted to be here. Um, yeah, so um, I'm sort of known as the author on, of books on dyslexia. So so this is the, the one I'm best known for. Dyslexia is my superpower most of the time. And um, I think what I want to do with my books is to change people's perception of... Um, well, of groups really. And I, I wanted, with that book, I wanted to change a perception that dyslexia was a, this terrible problematic thing, which for a lot of people it is, but there is another side. Um, there's a side about it being, giving positive attributes to a lot of children, young people and adults that they may not know about, but that, that but there are there. And uh, I was talking to my publisher and we, at the time, we both had teenage children and we were talking about how much um, information, how much there was in the newspapers all the time about the difficulties that teenagers faced. And I thought, you know, we need to do a book about this. Um, there was a lot of information out as well from experts, um, academics saying, and as parents often know, that teenagers are more influenced by their friends than they are by their parents or their teachers. And we thought, you know, that influence can be a good thing. If that influence is from positive people who are making real changes in their own lives or in the community around them, or even in the world around them, you know, that influence can be amazing. It can help teenagers who maybe feel a bit stuck, a bit depressed, or not just or just not sure which path to take in their lives it can it can make them think oh you know if they can do that i can do that um so that was the reasoning behind the book mm -hmm. um yeah and then i set about interviewing teenagers all over the world <laughs> well I mean, that's, a, that's a whole logistical <laughs> thing in itself let, 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 we'll have a look at that in a minute i hadn't realized i hadn't put two and two together with the dyslexia is my superpower book which i have with, a, with my own dyslexic daughter. So that book was useful. And we touched on dyslexia with one of the, with some of the authors yesterday, this idea yes. of about spinning it, turning it into. And one of our associates is a, a, has dyslexia and she has this dyslexia is my superpower on her sort of a, as a, on her email. You know, ah. if anything takes, 
so what you know it's, it's this is my superpower you know, get get over yourself sort of thing so thank you for that and i mentioned that book to a head teacher only yesterday and she said my staff are scared of that book oh really yeah i thought it was interesting this idea that actually you can take this sort of deficit and and and, and turn it on its head and turn it into something that is still a challenge which is what i like the little subtitle you know most of the time i think absolutely book. so we, i haven't put two and two together so thank you for both books well that challenge has to be there really because for a lot of children, young people, adults, you know, dyslexia has been a huge trauma in their lives and is still so difficult. Um, and in fact, if you don't mind, mind me picking up someone else's book, there's a book from the States called The Dyslexic Advantage. And as a parent, that changed my life as a daughter of um, someone with dyslexia, because it made me think my daughter is actually not me. She's different from me. She has academic struggles I never had but she has amazing skills I don't have. Mm -hmm. And that's played out into her adult life, you know? So this, this, that's another this, book That's another book to take a look out for. Okay, all right, we'll check that one out. Well, this, this, this idea of sort of turning things around and taking a label and making it a strength, mm -hmm. I mean, that comes across in the book. I was just, I made a note of it. There's a, a guy with ADHD, he says it, he just span it around as abundantly different and happily divine, mm -hmm. which is great. And somebody else talks about, you know, you call us the snowflake generation. I'm going to own that. And yeah, we are because we're, you know, we're, everyone is different and we stick together and we come together and that makes us strong. So owning, owning the label, mm -hmm. um, owning the issue, owning the disadvantage or whatever it might be, that, that comes across really strongly. In, so in both books. So mm -hmm. I think that, that's a powerful message. I only, I only got as far as page 15 with that one. So <laughs> thank you for that. How, how do you, so the book is, well, if you can just describe um, the, the, this book and, yeah. and, and then just tell us a little bit about how you managed to bring all these stories together so um yeah so the book is um it's a compilation really of, of teenager stories um so they're all very different so um there's the story of lucy who um started a petition she petitioned tesco to stop selling eggs from caged hens um she did this um writing letters for many years and got nowhere and um, sort of her letters were put to the bottom of a pile. And then she set, set up an, um, an online petition and it went viral. And not only Tesco, but loads of other supermarkets said, okay, we're gonna stop selling eggs from caged hens. We know this isn't what people want. So that, I mean, that was one astonishing story. And that's sort of interrupted that. And that's Lucy from Sheffield. And she was 14 when she was having a meeting with exactly. the head of agriculture of Tesco's. And this idea that at that age, using the technology, you can have that sort of influence and, and impact. And I like the fact you mentioned their name, you mentioned where they're from. So they're just yes. they're ordinary people. It's not super special people. They're people like, like you, 14 year old from Sheffield, you're a 14 year old from Bolton. You can do this, you have that sort of power as well. And just one other thing, just I'm interrupting you again, because it, it's, it's a thing of mine, uh, not interrupting all the rest of it. Um, the uh, World Economic Forum, they looked at the list of um, uh, trending and there were trending skills. What do we need? So this was in 2018 going into 2022. So pre, prior, prior to the pandemic, but still relevant. What are the skills that are going that we need going forward and need more of? And they have leadership and social influence is high in their top 10. And when I'm working with teachers talking about that leadership, yeah, we all know about leadership, but social influence is a new one. And the power that young people have, like Greta Thunberg, or uh, who was you know, in, the, in the introduction there, but, but any young, any child with, a, with a access to technology has the potential to be a social influencer, not an influencer in a YouTube way, although they can do that as well, but can make that sort of difference. That social influence is high on the list and needs to be nurtured and cherished and supported. So, so that's what this girl was doing. She became a social influencer at the age of 14, having meetings with the head of agriculture at Tesco's. Astonishing. And also, um, yeah, obviously, you know, young people today are brilliant at social media. But some, some of the kids in the book, that's not the route they took. So there's one girl who um, who is a bisexual and she um, negotiated with her school to set up a group at, for lunchtime for um, for gay, lesbian, transgender um, children to feel safe in this classroom to talk to each other, to network. Um, so that, um, so in her own small community, she did something really significant. Um, so it doesn't, um, although in, there, there are lots of examples that involve 
um, social media, including teens who have found ways of um, of using social media for the positive rather than for the negative. You know, they're challenging some of the ways social media is used that that hurt people. Um, you know, there are much smaller things um, that, that 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 teens can do as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's the social influence. It, 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 it's it's yeah, creating. Is that Neve from Liverpool, the one you were, you were referring uh, no, to? No, actually, it's she, um, she it's about, she touches on sexuality as well, doesn't she? She does. Yeah. No, there's a, there's def, there's a few yeah. few teens in the book. Yeah, there's there's a there's a boy from from America who goes to school in full makeup every day. That's yeah. his challenge to say, "I'm me." And you know, I mean, accept me. And they, in fact, in his part of the the states, they did. Yeah, the, the, you cover so many different aspects as well. I mean, there's the, the girl who was fighting sort of the period, um, the period poverty, and the fact that children were not yeah. going to school during their period, and she, she she took that on as her as her cause. And and there's bereavement, and there's mental health issues as well. There's a um, one of my mm -hmm. favourite ones, Makita, is it from uh, Malawi? Yes. Who, um, you know, she said, "I became a, when I lost my mother. I became this, I, this this fighter in me came out, and she's mm. fighting for her bit as well. So it's not about influencing the world generally, but just being inspiring and trying to take adversity and yes. use it as a way to 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 help her change her life and and make sure that adversity isn't passed on to to her children. There's, there's so many stories. Mm. Um, can you um? Where, where to start? You've also got the, the um, like the, the lady who went Maya is it went from Syria into Birmingham. So you've got the story of the yeah of 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 the of the of migrants, if you like, of people of forced um, displacement. Um, which, which sort? Of, how, how do you find these people? How did you find these people? Um, I found these people through social media. Some of the time, I just put a, a call out. Does any which teens inspire you? Sort of thing. Um, um, and yeah, and I and I looked, um, I looked online. I looked through um, people. That I, I approached organisations, so organisations across the world. Um, there's one girl in South Africa who I got from a women's organisation, who um, her group of friends were feeling really intimidate, intimidated walking to school, and she set up safe places for them. Uh, but there's also lots of boys in the book as well. Sorry, I keep talking about the girls. I don't know why. But, you know, there's, a, there's some amazing boys. There was um, one, uh, again, in the States who, um, on a school trip, he uh, went to a homeless shelter and he was told that the homeless didn't have the right clothes to wear um, for, for job interviews. And he had never used a sewing machine in his life, but he set up um, an organisation to... Um, get, they got clothes from big multinational companies actually he persuaded them to give them the clothes they no longer needed and he made them up to date and fashionable and gave them to homeless people mm -hmm. and um, you know just amazing yeah. and I think you know some people have said to me oh I wish there were more people like Greta Thunberg in the book you know but actually I think it's the everyday nature of some of these teens yeah. and Something else that happened at the same time as I was researching the book was the Royal Society of the Arts was doing some research into teenagers. And they found that adults mostly described, they gave adults a, um, who they studied a list of, of adjectives to describe teenagers and said, which ones do you think apply to teenagers? And the ones that, um, I wonder if I can find that whole list, the ones that they came up with most of all were lazy, antisocial, I can't remember, sorry, I can't remember the other one. There were uh, three. Well, you get the idea, definitely. You get the yeah. idea. Where that's going, yeah. And, um, um, and they, um, you know, if, if that is how we see teenagers, honestly, how are they going to see themselves? There were, um, in the same study, 84% of teens said they wanted to help others. So the adults were asked, why do teenagers want to volunteer? This is really interesting. The adults said, it's to help them with their UCAS forms and job interviews. And the teenagers answering the same question said, we want to help others. Mm. So they haven't got our cynicism yet, you know. They, they do feel they can make a change and helping others, of course, it has an effect on us too. It makes us feel better about ourselves. Absolutely. So let's give them a break, you know. Yeah. There's so, so much that we see about teenagers on, 
on, say, the television news, it's about knife crime. It's about um, you know, it's about negative things. And then all of a sudden, the A level results come out, and it's people with shiny hair throwing their their letters in there. Oh, that, that's that's the bit of positivity, you know. But what, what about all the other amazing things that teenagers do? Let's change. Let's change how we see them because it's going on. And if if we just change the discussion a bit, we'll change our own ideas. You know. I, I love that. I love that. So getting the teachers, getting the adults, getting the parents, getting to read this book as well and see what children are capable of, so we can just stop squashing them down and labelling them. I mean, the, the jumping in the air. There's one of my favourite ones in there as well. A girl from Norway who saw a pop video. On it, around a swimming pool yeah and all the boys all the males were doing all the backflips and everything and all the girls were just sort of sitting there and it's like so she wrote to complain to say well how come the boys have all the fun why are the girls just sitting around there's a swimming pool and they actually then ultimately changed this sort of pop video for some top pop group in norway isn't you, that you, amazing yeah it, it is a power that we that, that they have if we if we support them in it or just get out of their way a lot of it a lot of the time you we're, we're against the clock a little bit but you're um you're allowed who with the the, the football team now, that was such an inspiring story cameron is it from Edinburgh, I think. Do you want to just um, sort of share that Yorkshire, one? Yorkshire, I think, yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. yeah. Just share that one a little bit. Yeah, so Cameron, I, I just love this story. Harrogate, I mean, Harrogate. Never yeah, Harrogate. So Cameron was born with, um, sorry, let me, let me absolutely make sure I get this right. He's born with cerebral palsy. He loved football from when he was tiny. So he used to play in, the, in his back garden with his dad. When he went to school, he loved football, but he, because he didn't move as well as some of the other kids, he was never chosen for the teams. Then he was chosen for a team, but he was always on the subs bench and he was never chosen. And he thought, this is a waste of my time. It's a waste of my parents' time bringing me along. So what I'm gonna do is set up my own team. So he set up this team called Adversity United, which is for all children with disabilities. Um, so, um, and not only that, um, but he is, he then later found out through his school, there was a cerebral palsy team in the region, which he got accepted into. And he now plays for the cerebral palsy team for in the England national cerebral palsy team. So, you know, in every way he has, he, he has grasped what he wanted in his life, but also for other people who was who were going through what he went through, who weren't being allowed to play football and who were basically banished to their back gardens as the only acceptable place they could play. So he just, he, I think, just think he's amazing. Just that story alone, it just, it just sort of blew me away. Not only playing then in the cerebral palsy England team, but then creating this adversity United and just the name itself. I, I mean, yeah. the damned United was all about. <laughs> Derby or Forest, I don't remember, but the, um, the adversity united, doing something in order that other people didn't suffer the way that he suffered. It's just so this wanting to give and to share and to take your experiences to make to make the world better. Like, like exactly. I said right at the very beginning, we're we're got that gosh that went quickly. Um, <laughs> Um, your book, I think, is available. We're going to deal with the roving bookshop. Um, there are people who sort of turn your school hall into a, a, this amazing bookshop, uh, mm -hmm. and they've created an online book festival bookshop for us. Um, the links are on the on the website. But also, how can people get hold of um, uh, get hold of you, Margaret? How do uh, are you on social media? Um, yeah, so my, my books are in Waterstones, they're in local bookshops, um, they're online, of course. Um, I'm on at Margs Rook, um, M-A-R-G-S-R-O-O-K-E, on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and um, always, always pleased to hear from people. Um, and of course, since I've written this, I get amazing stories from, from people. And, you know, it. I just think it's wonderful that um people like I'm really so just chuffed that you get what I'm trying to do and you know let's change let's change the conversation you know people people see um a friend of mine said her friend was walking past a park with her toddlers and said oh we won't go in that park there's teenagers in there what of course not her teenagers when they grow up someone else's <laughs> teenagers uh, yeah, There's, for teachers watching this, head teachers watching this, you've got a, a year's worth of assemblies. You just stand up and read one of these stories. There's your assembly done. You know, let's discuss. It's such. A, I, I do think every school should have three copies. I'll certainly keep spreading the word about that. Margaret, thank you for thank you for dyslexia book. 
Um, I'm going to go back to that one now. Thank you for writing that book and, and to all the young people out there who've contributed to that and those who've still got their stories to tell. Um, keep at it because you're doing great work. And Margaret, thank you ever so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.